Uh, okay, welcome to this uh, uh, video looking at um, how to improve buildings in particular ventilation. Um, Alan here is going to take us around some of the things that he's done uh, on the farm, very practical issues. Um, we'll just kick off straight away here, if that's all right. Um, ventilation is all to do with inlet and outlet. You need both. If you don't have both, you're stuck. You can have inlet right and outlet wrong and vice versa. It will not work. And this is a classic example here where Alan's along one side here, there's an adjacent building. You can't get inlet fresh air in through solid walls. And really the only way around a situation like this is to put in mechanical ventilation here, which is what Alan's done. You put a fan drawing in air, clean air from the outside and spreading it down the tube here um, on top of the cows. It's, it's, it's a new introduction here, but what, what, what's your interpretation so far? Uh, I think I, can, I notice a big difference because when you walk up the cubicle passage now, you can actually feel, you feel fresh air. Before, the air in this section here used to be quite stale, and uh, I'm expecting that I'll see an improvement in cow performance as the year goes on, hoping to get a bit less mastitis. Uh, that kind of thing. How, how many cows, how many cubicles here? Because we need to talk about money. So how many cubicles in here, Alan? There are 70 cubicles on this side. Right. So if you, if you look at 70 cubicles, the potential losses will be uh, obviously uh, mastitis, anything that is impacted by a reduction in the environmental conditions. Here will be heat. We'll get a build up of heat and moisture if there's not enough ventilation. If there's background respiratory issues, then that will contribute as well. But I would tend to do the financial mathematics on looking to reduce incidence of mastitis um, and also looking at, certainly with beef cattle, we know that in a building that's tight, if it's opened up, we're looking at a 5% increase in yield. So let's be conservative. We're looking at a 3% increase in, in milk yield from 70 cows. There's part of your payback, the cost of the do you remember what kind of money this cost? Yeah, uh, a thousand pounds, just under what, yeah. five pounds, under a thousand or something. Yeah, yeah. So these, the the, the fan and duct system coming in here, ballpark a thousand pounds, ballpark a pound a day to run in terms of electricity. So they're not an expensive system. The only thing I would plead for is that actually, um, in a more constrained space than this, where you're slightly tight tighter, smaller volumes, then it, th these tubes should be designed correctly. The, the size of the holes, the size of the fan, and the location of the holes, if you see there's two lines of holes up there, and that actually they can be in the wrong place and it can do more damage than good. But for adult cattle like this, this is spot on. Simple, straightforward. So I mentioned earlier that ventilation is in and out. And in many ways, looking at existing buildings, where you start is by looking at the outlet. If the outlet is restricted for adult cattle, the building, you could take all the walls off, and when it's not windy, it still won't work. So what we've got is a great example here. Money's been spent, but I mean, what, what, was, what was your logic for doing what you've done here, Alan? Well, the whole roof was, the whole shed was needed re-roofed. So uh, when we were doing it, we decided we would get the ventilation right and uh, I had talked to Jamie before and he gave me the size of outlet that I needed at the top to achieve good ventilation. Uh, so uh, fortunately the Portland Basin at the top worked reasonably well to give a, an open protected ridge at the top. So um, it took quite a lot of work because most builders don't want to have a bespoke <laughs> ridge on the top. They're uh, looking to, uh, what they want to put on is a crank ridge, which was on before it and just didn't, didn't work. Yeah, and a, cr a crank ridge is where they're incredibly common. Um, the builders love them because they're easy, they, they, they work well, but um, in a building like this, if you had a full line of crank ridge sheets, you would have less than 25% of the outlet you need. That's how poor they are. So, you know, this 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 costs more money, obviously, yeah. than doing that route. Yeah. I think it probably costs about 
uh, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure of the cost because there was a difference between materials and labor and the labor was just added into the whole yeah, shed yeah, job yeah. but probably cost about two and a half thousand extra yeah, to, yeah. to put that ridge on yeah, yeah. and again what we're sort of saying is there's two very important factors here one is people don't want a hole in the roof because the rain will come in um, the problem with that of course then the rain won't come in but on the other hand neither will you ever get good ventilation so those are those are two facts that are contradictory um, the second thing is the money and I mean when I look at the quality of being what's been done here, it's you know it's excellent. It really is. It's excellent. But if you got somebody in as an outside contractor and went the full spec, you're maybe running over a hundred pound a meter to put that up. So that would be four and a half thousand pounds in this building. But even so, if you look at, I mean, how many cattle in here altogether? 140. So 140 cattle. If you were looking, you know, for let us say a three percent lift in performance, then you can do the maths on that and see that even at four and a half thousand pounds, getting somebody else to do all the work um, and opening up the building, you'll get paid back within a couple of years and then for the next 20 years, you'll just make more money. So absolutely essential and it, this has been nice, nicely done. Brilliant, well done. We tend to start, start with outlet because in, in many ways that's the easiest thing to understand. Is there enough of it? And if there isn't enough of it, you know, say the calculations, they're SAC calculations anyway, um, you know, it's quite something you can work out objectively whether there's enough outlet in the roof. We then come to the next bit, which is actually more difficult, it's inlet. Most buildings most of the time are inlet, uh, are ventilated by the wind. So and the wind comes from all directions. And, and, and the issue we have in the whole of Britain, really, is a conflict between it being too windy, because a draft is disadvantageous, uh, and also will drive rain into the building, of course. Um, and so we tend to have a lot of buildings with solid sides, especially on, say, the west, southwesterly side, where the prevailing winds come from. The problem with that is that for 50% of the time of the year, you are refusing free ventilation, which is pretty dumb. It's not a good business decision. So what we've got here is an upgrade, and we'll speak to Alan about that in a minute. But basically, the, one of the problems with space board, which is literally a board in a space, is that in this climate, the rain will come 20 foot into the shed. So all these cubicles would be damp, which is not constructive at all. The important thing about space board, you never go above a one inch gap, because otherwise you exaggerate the problems. But what Alan's done here, is uh, really quite cute with a six inch board and a three inch gap. Now what's ha what's the, what, what that's done, if you had a six inch board with a one inch gap, which is space board, then two things go wrong. First is when it rains, these will all be damp because the rain will come through this one inch hole. And if you make it any bigger, the air speed goes up as well. But what Alan's done here, six inch board with a three inch gap. So it's three times as much inlet area for 140 dairy cattle, which is extremely important. But he's put another line of boards on the outside. This is Yorkshire board. This is what the whole of Scottish agriculture needs on its prevailing wind side. So this is Yorkshire board. It obviously has a higher material cost but the point is that the, the difference between this being solid and then having no fresh air, no ventilation, or it being space board, in which case all these cubicles would get damp throughout the winter, is a huge impact for two lines of boards. This is just excellent stuff. And I mean, again, how is, 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 is that new, Alan? Yeah, that's a, it was before on that side of the shed, it was just solid asbestos board. And uh, uh, there was just uh, there was just no ventilation uh, at all on this side. And, uh, you really notice a difference. Yeah. We're not getting the uh, high speeds of wind coming through, even in high speed wind speed outside. It's just a yeah. nice draft coming through, yeah. 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 fresh air. So I say that's ideally what you would have done on the other side of the shed as well, but obviously we couldn't get uh, do that on the other side. I think in, 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 terms, in terms of going, you know, the future and helping the producers sort of 
minimize their losses and maximize their yield. That's probably the most important thing you'll look at, is the Yorkshire board out of Aberdeen 40 years ago that this is the cladding you put on the exposed sides of buildings because what the natural instinct to do is to make it solid and that means the building will never ever ever function as well as it can do. Yorkshire Board, you know, as, as Alan was saying, it controls the wind. So even in, the, well last night we had 60, 70 mile an hour winds, um, that does a great job. Where you have problems with inlet because of solid walls on the side, then to introduce a tube and a duct is a very cost-effective way of doing it. Um, and what we're looking to do is to, is to see good distribution really to where the cows are. So using a smoke machine here. You can see where the smoke is coming into contact with the air coming out the tubes. What, what it's doing is driving the air to be distributed through the space. And again, what's important to see is that really the smoke is just describing the movement of the bulk of the air. Because we've got air coming in here under pressure, it has to go somewhere else. And you can see it now, it's being, you know, the, the air being pushed in here. What are we now? We're now 30 seconds in and we're looking for, you know, if the air space is cleared within less than 60 seconds, that's just top class. And if you scan up the building there, you'll see that, you know, as far as the, the, I can see it from here, the smoke going all the way out through the outlet. And in that smoke will be the heat, the moisture and the bugs.